Hey folks, Jab Bernakovich here with All Points Design. For those of you that are in the course, the Permaculture Design course from Oregon State University, this will be very familiar to you. This is one of the practice sheets to understand watersheds and, and how they work uh, when we're taking a look at a site, when we're asking what is the what is the watershed of this site. For those of you that are joining us from further afield, this is, as I was saying, this is a way of taking a look at a contour map, which is what we see here, which is taking elevations of a three-dimensional place and giving us a sense generally of what that site, that site looks like. And starting to understand if we say, what is the watershed of the property? And the property, we can see the design site in yellow. Uh, if this is the design site here, then what's the watershed of the site? Now there's a few rules of the game that we need to understand and we need to work with. And one of the rules of the game is that water, water flows at right angles or 90 degrees, at right angles or 90 degrees, so 90 degrees, to contour. So that's a nice way of saying that we go all the way down here and let's take... Um, Let's take this contour line here. That means that water is going to flow at 90 degrees to the contour line all the way along. So that means if we had a, a uniform rain pattern that came on this contour line, it would flow onto and off of this contour at right angles. And if we, if we extended this pattern up, and started to get a sense of where all of this water might fall and on where contours turn you can really see how this works especially if we place our arrows equidistant from each other because we get a really good sense that water collects in valleys and if we work this arrow pattern all the way along we can start to really see where those collection points, where those drainages might be. So it should be pretty clear at this point that the water would generally, and we'll just kind of switch it up here so we've got a sense of it. Generally, we would have a collection of water that comes down through this drainage. And if we zoom out, would definitely impact and influence this site. Now, when we're asking a question of what is the rainfall, what is the watershed, how does the watershed interact with this site specifically, we have to look higher up. So when we look higher up, we start taking a look at, we'll go back to our highlighter here. Uh, we start to take a look at these contour lines to understand this is 500 feet, this is 510, this is 520. So all of a sudden we know that this is a 10 foot contour interval. And then as we move up, we've got 530, 540, this must be 550 here. And yes, indeed it is 560, 570, and these are all 570s. Great. So as we move over and we're trying to find the top of the watershed, because if we're asking what the watershed is, we have to understand what the top is. So this is 530, this is 520. And then 520 comes all the way along here. So probably that means that this right here is gonna be 510 and it looks like it is, cool. And then we can probably assume that this is gonna be 520, so it's gonna come back up again. And if we just follow it along, chances are we are going to find a 520. Uh, there it is all the way over there, all the way over there. Okay, so that's definitely 520. That means the top is 530 and 540. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a look at high points. And once I get those high points, I'm gonna erase some of this just so we don't clutter up the conversation. Once I get those high points, I can start to create a watershed boundary. Now, this assignment is asking for a dotted line, dotted red line. As we can see here, it's asking for a watershed boundary or a dotted red line. So when we start working with a watershed boundary, we need to know what's the top and what's the bottom, just like a roof. So say that we were uh, in the urban environment and we were trying to take a look at what the watershed was of the house. Well, the roof would be the watershed and we'd want to know where the top was. We'd not want to know where the bottom was. 
Now, for this assignment, the bottom of this site is the bottom of the roof. Because the watershed that influences site would not be below, wouldn't happen. So it must be above that we're looking at. So not below, but above. So I'm just going to get rid of those, not clutter up our drawing. So as we come back up to the top, we know 570 all the way over here is right at the top. So there's definitely going to be, you know, somewhere in here that's going to be uh, the top of this boundary. But we can actually go from the bottom knowing that water flows at right angles to contour. And we can basically see if we we're going to go back over to blue and we were going to say, okay, well, there's a bunch of arrows here. And it looks like if this flows in this direction, and this flows in this direction, then probably this is actually the line that we want for our watershed, because that's the that's the angle that would influence our site. So we can go back to red, and we can start to see a little pattern here of where, and this is roughly right, instead of being precisely wrong. So I'm going to get rid of some of these blue arrows just so we can have a clean drawing so generally and this actually might kind of take a turn here because again we're looking at water that flows to right angles and because contours change it doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect so generally coming up to here and now here's a good question what are we doing between 560 and 570 well it looks like there are some high points between 570 and 560 but 10 feet is a lot of space so we've got Know, 10 feet between this and this which means that there's probably a bit of um, a bit of topography that's not captured in the contour lines so two options here we can interpolate and say well I think generally it's going to come to the top and generally we're going to have a connection between these two and now what we're doing is now that we've gotten to a high point again we're going to try to find another high point and we've got a few high points we've got a 530 so we know that's a high point, we've got a 540. So again, we're trying to find, sorry about that. We're trying to find where the water would flow. Now, if we go back to our blues and say, okay, water is generally going to flow at right, right angles to contour here. And when it flows at right angles to contour, and because this is uh, a bit of a ridge for this area, Chances are that the water that flows in between these two lines, this water is going to move this way and this water is going to move this way. And sure enough, there's a drainage here and there's a drainage. Oh, pardon me. That's a little messy. Let's try that again. There's a drainage here. So that's, that's a pretty good line for us to take uh, that blue line there. So we're going to switch back over to our contour. Uh, pardon me, our watershed map legend we're always moving off the legend and working with the legend so again we're just going to take a look here i keep moving this to get a better angle but it likes to move with me so i'm just going to move my head a bit and uh and say that you know if that's fine I'm, i might even put it a little bit further this way now that i'm looking at this with my head uh, cranked a little bit uh now again this is this is a bit of a question in between this area here is a bit of a question so you know if you decided to go uh, my line which is kind of a little bit over or if you wanted to take this line both of those would be roughly right uh, we're just trying to make sure that you folks understand that water flows to right angles to contour and if we're asking for a watershed of a site that you get a sense of where that watershed is because if you're doing calculations for total water that might flow into a site this can be really important so again, we don't know what happens above 540 over here, but we do know what's happening down here. So I would I would say generally, again, generally, this would be uh, something like that. And now, now that we're at the top of 540, uh, we could argue, because we don't know what's above 540, that basically anything that falls on 540 would fall in a regular pattern all the way around. And so if you took that pattern, you could then say, well, I, I would say maybe up here. And then again, we're coming back down and trying to find 
the area between now this, uh, this summit or this knuckle. And then if we take a look down going from 540 to 530 to another 520 line, so this is going to be 520 here and this is going to be 520 here. This is what's called a saddle. Now in between these two, there's going to be a place where the water that falls on this saddle is going to cut the difference, going to split the difference. So if we were being rather particular, which I'm known for being, chances are, while we don't know what's happening at 540, we could assume that generally 540 is going to be you know, something like that. We're going to come down here, going to cross here, and then we're going to come up to the, the highest part in this entire watershed. Now again, it's a little bit hard to take what this watershed might be from the top. So let's go back down to the bottom on this northern side. Again, convention is always that the maps that we are looking at, the maps that we create, north is up. Let's come back down here and follow our conversation that water flows to right angles to contours. So if water flows from right angles to contours, that would influence, that would influence. Now we're kind of getting on an angle that would influence, 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 that would influence. That would influence. Kind of become this contour hunter when you're playing these games. And again, there's a lot of space in between these two. And when contour lines are together, we know that this is steep. And this is more flat or flatter. So a uh, good point to keep in mind that that's what that means when we're looking at contour. And then when we get to the top here, again, here's our, here's our top over here. So it's going to be the, the highest point in the watershed. Chances are it's going to be a pretty direct line all the way over to here. So I would guess that those generally uh, are the high points and the, the contour pieces. And I like to mark the high points just for my own, um, my own state of mind and just understanding what's happening on here. And so that's going to be the watershed boundary. What's the watershed basin? Um, now, you could think that this is pretty <laughs> self-explanatory, but we really want to make sure that you understand that what's inside of this area is indeed the watershed basin. It's the inside of the cup. It's the inside of a cupped hand, um, something of that effect. So I'm just going to increase, I'm going to decrease our opacity, increase our thickness so I can color in here pretty quickly. That's a little bit, uh, let's go for quite thick. Okay, so... Basically, what we're asking you to do is color inside this area just to show that you know, that we know, that you know, that this is the inside of the watershed. Okay, cool. We can do a quick color. Cool. So, although the color is not perfect, I would probably go in here and then change... I will always want my colors to match, so I'd probably come in here and uh, um, I don't know if I can do it in this program, but I would change this so that way it was clear that that water that that this color matched up. So that takes care of the watershed boundary, that takes care of the watershed base, and now it's asking for water flow lines, which is an interesting uh, piece here. So that means we're asking you to show us that you know. I'm going to increase the thickness here, where the water might be flowing here. So you could, if you were quite um, persnickety, you could go in and you could do as I've done with these arrows. And you could go in and you could basically do arrows all along here. Sorry, all along here. Oh yeah, and that'll happen because we've, we've colored everything in. So you could go in, in here and you could put in all the arrows just to show where the water flow lines are now that would i would say that's probably a beginner's way of doing this which is completely fine but if you find that you've looked at enough contour maps to understand what you're seeing chances are you're going to see that there's actually a pretty fantastic drainage right in the middle here so we know that there is definitely a main drainage that comes down into and influences this practice site we can also see that there are some interesting drainages that feed it as well. So we've got 
a drainage that comes up to this saddle. We've got a drainage that comes up into this little area. We definitely have a small little drainage that comes through here. Um, and those, I would say, are the major drainages. There's, there's a tiny minor drainage right here, but I wouldn't say that's a... Uh, well, we could if we really wanted to. We could just put a little little something something but those would be the major flow lines and then of course there's going to be a major flow line that comes through this property so this would be one of those properties where if, if this was your site i would be very concerned about overland flow and flooding you're directly in a main drainage in a main draw of uh of an area and i would be i'd be very suspect of that so main things to come back to so let's just summarize this here Water flows to right angles. Water flows to right angles. Water flows to right angles of contour. So if you're ever trying to find a watershed and understand a watershed, you're going to have to go down to that contour level to really understand it. Second thing, watersheds, because we're asking the watershed of a property, the watershed of the property is going to start at the bottom or end, depending on, on how you're thinking about this, but will end at the bottom of the site because... This is basically the roof, this whole watershed area. This is the roof for this site. So we want to make sure that we capture that. And again, if we use our conversation that water flows to right angles above contour, we can then walk our way up as we did all the way along this to understand where that water might flow, where those high points are, where it comes down to lower high, po high points, where it goes down between saddles. And, you know, looking at this, this is roughly right. This is not, um, this is not perfectly right. So... You know, if I was to refine this further, I might actually split the difference between uh, this point and this point. I might take an equidistance point and then just refine that even a little bit more, which would further refine our calculations and further refine our conversations that were happening here. So I might be more persnickety with that. Um, but that's what we want to see. We want you to understand that water flows to right angles of contour that if we're asking for the watershed of a property that it starts at the bottom of a site and then if you walk up contours at right angles coming to high points noticing where water would shed in a different way and just to give you guys a sense of this if we went back over to a highlighter tool and let's say we chose purple this would be another watershed for another site you know all of this area over here um, and usually on ridges we have, we have a general ridge here. It's not really quite pronounced, but generally on ridges, just like on roof ridges, so we've got water that flows on this side and water that flows on this side, generally we have that pronouncement that shows that water delineates. On the north side here, it's actually much more pronounced. So the water that flows on this ridge would, would flow this way, and this water would flow this way, and then, of course, we've got this drainage here, which then starts to interact with this drain that comes off of this site. Um, that's probably a lot of uh, ink or, <laughs> in this case, uh, digital pixels that don't need to be there to clutter the understanding of the site. But that's what we're looking at, and it's an important piece to understand when we're taking a look at watersheds. Uh, if that was helpful, feel free to leave a comment or a like. If you want to see other videos like this, feel free to make comments below. Uh, feel free to subscribe and to share. And thanks so much for being in the course or for stopping by.